Right, so it's time to reassemble this Amiga after it's recapping. And there's a few jobs to do. I need to put this keyboard connector back because I desoldered it to do the recapping. Another job is that underneath the keyboard connector, a bit of the solder mask has come off. And I think that's because of the leaking capacitors that slightly corroded it. So one of the things I'd like to do is to cover that solder mask up to stop it from corroding anymore. You can see it's just there that it's gone off that trace. And let me just check that that trace is actually still good. So I think it goes from here. Yeah, and it's connected to that. So the trace is still good. It's just got no solder mask on top of it. I've just got some nail varnish that I can put on that. This is just a bottle of Rimmel London nail, uh, clear nail lacquer. So I'm going to try and use that on here. The only trouble is, is this, this thing, the brush on this is massive. <laughs> so I don't really know. I'm just going to get a tiny bit on there. So how am I going to do that? I've got an old box of matchsticks, like safety matches. Oh, that one actually looks like it's even been burnt. Maybe I could just... Yeah, get it on with a match like that. Maybe that's the way to do it. So I just want to, yeah, I just want to try and cover that up and stop it from corroding or anything, or even from any of the solder from getting on it when I resolder the keyboard connector. It is very close to those keyboard connectors. So I'm just going to dip a bit on this tin foil. Oh, it smells really bad. There's a little bit on the end of this matchstick. There we go. That's a very smelly Amiga 1200. Whew. That stuff's really potent. So there's not much to see there, just a bit of nail lacquer. How long does this stuff take to dry? I don't know. It's made in Paris. Absolutely no instructions on clear nail lacquer. So that's a fail for the beauty industry there. Next thing is to put this keyboard connector back in and make sure you put it in the right way. Now the trouble with these is, and I've done this before, is when I put one of these back, because I'm using this liquid flux, you can really get this inside here um, if you get it all over the place and it really messes the connector up. It's easy to put this back, but just if you're going to be using liquid flux like I am, just make sure you don't get it all over the place because it's pretty nasty stuff. I'll just give it a quick spray inside with contact cleaner. Oh, I think I've run out. It's totally run out. My contact cleaner is gone. I'll just put some IPA in it for now. It does look pretty clean. Ooh, that fits in quite nice. It's quite, it's holding in quite solid actually. Right, let's just heat the solder in. You don't need it on really hot for this because these are only tiny little, tiny little connectors. Let's just see if I can get one on. If I can do it without the flux, that'll be fine, I think. I mean, there is flux in the solder, so maybe I don't need the flux. Right, that's one end on. Let's put the other end on. I think I'm going to get away without the flux. I just don't want to get it everywhere because it's just in case it gets into the connector somehow. I don't think it can, but you never know. Right, did I get all the pins? I think I did. Let me just clean that up and let's have a look at it. So I'm quite happy with those. So it's time to give it a quick test. Let me put this clip back on first. And uh, let me just shove away all these old caps. This is the amazingly yellow keyboard. Ugh, disgusting. So this is going to be tricky to get in. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to prop this up without destroying something. Maybe I'll just have to hold it. Right, keyboard. Oh, we've got something. Right, so the keyboard is back. I've had problems before in the past though, where if you press two keys together, sometimes like it looks like the whole keyboard's working, but some of the keys together didn't work. I've had it where Control Amiga Amiga didn't work, but it is working. So I think I have reconnected that correctly. So next job then is to put this case, put it all back together, but I want to give the case a good cleaning first, because this thing's got all these dirt inside it. There's quite a lot of dirt in the bottom side of the case. It's not very yellow though, it's quite good. Top side is looking pretty good, it's just a bit dirty. So I'm going to go give this a scrub before I do any further assembly to this. Right, so while all that's happening, I'm going to put this shield back on. Which I don't think I'm even going to clean, it looks alright. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. There seems to be much wrong with that. There we go. So let me put all these little 
screw terminals in the back. So yeah, this part's quite tedious, putting these things in and out. Right, that's our bottom shield back in. Hopefully I've not goofed that up. It looks good. Right, I can't go any further now until my case has dried. Right, I've dried the case and the case has turned out pretty well. Still a little bit of water in there actually, I can see it. So the case turned out pretty well actually. There's these little black spots, they didn't seem to want to come off. I'm not exactly sure what they are. There was a lot of scrubbing going on down here because there was this, there's this green paint all over it, which is mostly coming off with isopropyl alcohol, but um, you can still see a bit of it. So a bit more scrubbing might get the rest of that off. There's a little bit of that on the keys as well, but most of it's come off and it's not in a very easy to see place there. So this uh, just goes back together. Now, if I remember this right from last time, you slot the back in and then drop it down like that. And we're right, get it in there and then it drops down and that should be, should be right, I think. I think that goes in there and that'll just barely stop it from falling out. And there's, there's gonna be one more there, but that goes in from underneath and one more that holds the floppy drive in. But that's in pretty solid already, actually. That's quite good. Maybe I can put this clip on now. This little clip goes over the corner of this board here. So that clips over the board there. And then this screws in from underneath. This is like a little bolt that bolts into this actual metal piece. And it's weird that they chose to do it like this, but it's the way they did it. So it just kind of squeezes on the motherboard down there. I'm not exactly sure what the th thinking was behind that. I don't know why one of these wouldn't have been good enough. Is that to make, oh, is it to make contact with the shield? Oh, is that why that's there? Maybe that's the reason they chose that. Like that's the thing that's making contact with the shield. I don't know. That seems to be it. So let's see if we can get the floppy drive back in. There's a bracket like this. How does this go? So those two bolts go in from underneath. Right, I remember now. Ha, huh, it's all coming back to me. Right, let's see if I can get these ones in from the other side now. This is quite tricky. It's more tricky than I thought it was gonna be. Right, that floppy drive is definitely in. I hope that's in the right place. Yep, it feels quite solid. We are getting somewhere. There's this hard drive bracket, which is actually required because it sits the keyboard on top. So I've got to put this back. This was really hard to get out the first time. It's probably hard to get back, is it? Got a little light assembly. This little light assembly is keyed, so you can't put it in the wrong way. That's very nice of them to do that. Keyboard is going back. Right. And I believe this light assembly feeds through here, I think. If I remember right. And that just sits in the bottom there and sits on top. Let's give ourselves a boot test and make sure that I haven't balked anything in the reassembly operation. It's been a long time since this thing's been back together. Let's put the test kit disc in. See if we get any lights or is it gonna blow up? We got a light. There's a light on there. Whew, that's a relief so far. Need to make sure this doesn't short out on anything. Oh, floppy drive lights on. Oh, nearly shorted it. There we go. Let's do a quick memory test. Just make sure it's not broken or anything. It takes a lot longer on this because we've got two megabytes. There we go. Let's try some tiny bubble. Well, it's definitely on. Excellent, let's get the top back on. Let's see it in its full glory. Right, just shove the light assembly back in. Should have done that first into the case. Hmm, I really don't like this light assembly on the 1200. It's so much more, so much more fiddly than the one on the um, A600. Where it's just got a little wire you just connect, disconnect. This one's all over the place. It won't just go in, just go in. It's not gonna press on the buttons here at this rate. Right, how are we doing? 
Oh god, yeah, this light assembly. I hate it. I already hate it. What's wrong with it? Have I done something wrong? I think it's just annoying. Oh, I don't know what my soldering iron cable just wants to be inside the Amiga. <laughs> Stop it. Right, are we back on? Oh, the, cl the crack. The crack when it goes together. Stick this panel back in. Trapdoor panel, what am I talking about? Oh, look at that. It's all back together. The case is actually in really good condition. It's got the odd scuff mark on it here and there and that bit of green paint, but it looks really good. The key, the keys are a different story, however. So the keyboard I'm gonna do in a separate video, but uh, other than the keyboard, like this is basically the way I want it. I don't think there's any reason to, to do anything to this case. Now it's been washed, it just looks fine. There's a little bit of yellowing on the front end here, but I think once the keys look nice, this thing will look great. So hopefully this is uh, still working. Let me boot up, see what we get. Now notice I haven't put the, um, haven't put all this shielding back. Well, I've got no power light. Why have I got no power light? Is that normal? Should I not have a power light? Oh, is that upside down? I've put, oh my God, I've put that in upside down, haven't I? That's the power light. Oh my word, that, no wonder this didn't go in properly. That's the reason why it was messing with the keys. That's, the, that's not the hard disk light, that's the power light. Oh my word, I can't believe I just did that. God damn it. Right, let me stop the video and I'll fix this. Right, that's 10 minutes of my life I can't get back. Let's see if I fixed it. Yes, the power light is the power light now. That is amazing. That's 10 minutes of my life gone. Can't get that back. Don't put that in upside down. For some reason, when I was putting it in, I, I just thought the power light was at the top and it's not. That explains why it was so hard to get in when the wires were sticking into the keyboard and stuff. I was thinking, why did they design it this badly? Well, they didn't. Sorry, Commodore. Sometimes I slag you off, but in this case, it was my fault. Hey, it's still working. <laughs> yeah. So I think actually the case looks really good. It's actually quite wide. I don't think it, I don't think I'll retrobite the case. The keys are just so bad though. I'm gonna have to do something about those in a future video. They are awful. Truly awful. And there's a bit of green paint on them and they're all dirty. So I've not really cleaned the keyboard up, but that can be done. All the work I've done here, if you've got an A1200 or an A600 and it has not been recapped yet, it's been 30 years since those caps were put in and they are failing. Whether you like it or not, they are failing. So if you haven't done it, uh, you should do it or pay somebody else to do it because uh, you actually need quite a bit of equipment to do this. You need a soldering iron, desoldering station, and it takes a little while. But if you haven't got the equipment and you can't be bothered, I know this place is like Amiga kit that will do it for like 35 pounds or something. And it's well worth it because it's just going to fail eventually. It, those capacitors are leaking and eating away at your computer. Even if they don't eat away at the computer, then you're going to have functionality that starts to fail. At, like the video output wasn't working on mine. Eventually, if the electronics stop working, then you're in trouble. So I would say for Amiga 1200s and 600s, it is time to recap them, whether they need it or not. But yeah, I'm really happy with this. This is looking great. So future video, I'm gonna sort this keyboard out and I do wanna get a hard disk in this because this could be a really good computer. Uh, well, I say a hard disk. I wanna get some kind of SSD or something in it. I don't wanna use a hard disk. Uh, even though I like the Amiga, um, it's 2021 and I don't have hard disks in any of my computers anymore, like spinning hard disks. So this, yeah, this is great. So you'll be seeing it again in the future, hopefully. Well, if Turrican 2 works, then the Amiga works. <laughs>